Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's really good to be able to uh, share some time with you in Bible study. Um, this afternoon, we're trying something completely different. Sue and I are going to have a conversation over the lectionary reading that is for this coming Sunday, which is taken from Luke chapter 10. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, thank you, Sue, for uh, being my guinea pig in this That's new right. format for Bible study. Um, and we'll see how we go. Um, I'm hoping to uh, to share this with both Kidderminster and with Worcester. So we'll hopefully get quite a good following and see what um, see what uh, response we get to it. Um, as, as we would always do in a Bible study, I'm going to open with prayer. So let's pray. We bring ourselves to this place, this moment in time. We bring ourselves before you, O oh God. We come knowing you and yet seeking to know you more. As together we study your word and seek your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Sue, do you want to, uh, to read for us? I'll read um, for us, reading. yeah. We're reading from Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read verses 1 to 11, then 16 to 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every place, town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest with him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, Go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we will wipe off against you. He who listens to you, listens to me. He who rejects you, rejects me. But he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. How far are we going? The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice in that, that, that spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Well, thank you, Sue, for reading that. Um, it's uh, there is an awful lot in that passage that I think we can get our teeth in, uh, our teeth into this afternoon. But I think before we do anything else, I think it would be good if I just shared a bit of the context and a bit of the um, the uh, sort of what's going on in the passage in terms of why there are seventy two people sent out, uh, what actually Jesus is instructing the disciples to do, um, what actually this is um, intended to uh, sort of give us some insight into so first of all um this is luke's second account um of jesus sending out disciples to extend his ministry of teaching and healing um of course we're told that 72 are sent out in this passage but but we're also told that in chapter 9 jesus has already sent out the 12 disciples that he has already appointed and it's very interesting that that the instructions that the 12 are given and the 72 are given are very similar. Um, they are told to go to, to villages and towns and to offer peace um, and to seek hospitality and to proclaim that the kingdom of God is drawing near. But I think the other thing that's really interesting is the fact that they're both given uh, power to heal. Um, and I find it quite fascinating that, that, that actually at the end of that passage, um, Jesus 
um, is told by the 72 that come back that they've been given authority even to command demons to come out of uh, uh, people that they encounter. Um, and they're really excited about that. And then Jesus says something about being able to stand on snakes and scorpions. Um, and I think that we've got to sort of link that back, I think, to, to Genesis when, when um, obviously uh, Adam and Eve um, disobey um, God in the Garden of Eden. Um, and, and God talks about the fact that he's going to put enmity between uh, the, the, the offspring of Eve yeah. and snakes and scorpions. I don't know if you picked that up, but I found that really quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating, um, isn't it? He had his head bruised, did that serpent. But now things are yes. coming back together for him. Yeah, absolutely. And for the people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it kind of links that these, 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 these 72 um, and the 12 are, are kind of the offspring of, 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 of Eve, but part of the new Adam and yeah. the new kingdom that is, that, that, that is coming in. The other thing that's really interesting that I think we need to pick up on is the fact that 72 is a number that symbolizes for for at least the first century the number of known um nations in the world um yeah. there is actually a bit of discrepancy i think between whether it's 70 people mm. that jesus sends out or 72 um and and scholars have have, um, have sort of commented that that 70 if it's 70 that's a perfect number if it's 72 it is about the number of known nations that there were in the world yeah. and this is about Jesus extending the kingdom, not just to the lost sheep of Israel, but but to um, to to the whole of uh, the created order, and that kind of links back to Genesis two, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and also, it's about it's about the mission um, of God being being given and breaking into the Gentile world. Um, so we're yeah, it, it, and 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 that's hinted at by Jesus's command to eat what is yeah. set before you yeah. not 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 just simply say oh I can't eat that because it's not um uh, yeah. clean like um like uh, Peter talks um in Acts chapter 10 when he has that vision of the of the sheep coming from heaven and having to learn actually that God's mission is extended to to, um, mm. to the Gentile world it's it's actually Jesus Jesus commanding them to eat what is what is set before them because this is hospitality in yeah. both directions yeah yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, because it, it's mentioned twice, isn't it? Eat yes, it is. Given. Yeah, and it's quite significant. I wondered if it had to do with with um, eating the things they weren't supposed to eat in the yeah. Jewish terms. Yeah, so yeah, that's interesting. And it's, and, it, and it's interesting that actually this is Luke that's writing this mm. and the fact that Luke is purported to have written Acts. So there's mm. that correlation yeah. between... the link. Yeah. Mm. Um, in the... Uh, um, notes that I got from Roots, it says that the 70 anticipate the coming of Jesus. Their vulnerability like lambs among wolves means that they must rely on receiving as well as giving God's blessing. Um, mm. Hence the importance of prayer and hospitality. Um, they're to travel light. So there's a sense of urgency. There and, really is, isn't there? Um, you, can, you can feel it when he says, go, you know, don't stop, don't pack your bags. This isn't a holiday. Don't take you know, don't stop and chat on the way. It's really quite urgent. Yeah, and I like that that it's not like a holiday. Yeah, um, because because um, of course in the church we tend to get quite comfortable in in just simply doing the things that we always do. Yeah, um, and not and not thinking about the fact that our our call as disciples mm -hmm. is to go out and proclaim the good news. Yeah, and 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 we often talk um about the need to go um is but it's quite terrifying i mean i mean the fact that we're we're being well well and we're being told that the 72 are being sent out like like lambs among wolves i mean that's yeah. not, a, not a nice thing to be it, is, it, it doesn't feel like a comfortable passage when you first look at it does it at all it's no. quite daunting especially the bits about the, the lambs and the wolves and and the ending where things are falling out of the sky it's it's quite dramatic but the more yes. you read it the more you get the the feeling that it it because the disciples end up joyful yes they do and this is what this is what we have to do to make our lives complete to follow god's will and it's quite interesting from that point of view isn't it yeah absolutely i like that 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 actually yeah um um we have to 
take the risk have, in order to receive joy. Um, and we're yeah. not very good at taking risk in the church, I don't think. No, no, it's quite hard. But also, I thought that bit that the lambs and the wolves is, are quite significant because we have to be, Jesus is our, our shepherd. And we have to be lambs, don't we? We have to listen for his voice. And while we're doing all this, we then need to be listening for that voice that's going to yeah, help us true. and direct us. And then it took me back to the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. So while we're out there and there's wolves and things and, and, and it's uncomfortable and difficult, then there's something we can, that we can have in our heads and lean on. And just one example of all the things we could have had yes. of, of the Old Testament. But it just sort of sparked that in my head. And it and it kind of links as well, if you use the 23rd Psalm, with mm. Jesus's declaration that he's the good shepherd and the yeah. gate through which the yeah. sheep go out and graze into uh, yeah, good yeah, pasture absolutely. and yeah. protect from the wolf that, that mm. jumps over the fence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's so I think that's... Of course, the other thing that it links with is, is that prophecy from Isaiah where, um, mm. where, where, where Isaiah says that when, when the Son of Man comes, um, the wolf... We'll lie down with lie the down lamb. Lie down with the lamb. Yeah, oh, that's um, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's 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 all about um, what what actually is is at the heart of this passage, which is about Jesus bringing peace yeah. to the to the towns and villages that he's going to pass through on his way up mm. to um, to Jerusalem. But it's not a peace in the way that we understand it. I think mm. I think it's that it's that Jewish understanding of shalom, yeah, uh, and atonement. Because, of course, before all of this, Jesus has mm. firmly fixed his eyes on, on Jerusalem, hasn't he? Yeah. And we know the reason why he's fixed his eyes on Jerusalem is because he's going up to Jerusalem to, to suffer and die on the cross. Um, but, of course, at the heart of uh, that sacrifice is that shalom and that oneness with God again, which is, which is again, why... The 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 the, uh, the seventy two are able to stand on on scorpions, mm. scorpions and snakes because they are at one again with God because of what Jesus does. Yeah, yeah, yes. As you say, it's a very rich passage, isn't it? That all of it is in there. Yes. The other thing that I quite liked was was the fact that there is free choice in this passage. Um, yeah. That that actually. Um, all the villages and towns that the disciples are to pass through still have the opportunity to say, I think, no, we don't want to receive this message. Mm -hmm. um, and the disciples are told, well, don't worry about that if if that happens. Mm -hmm. Just go and, and 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 shake the dust off um, off the sandals and 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 and, and, and just say to the towns, uh, we wipe off um, the dust that sticks to our feet against you but remember that the kingdom of god has come close it yeah. doesn't matter whether or not we choose they well we or they choose to accept the message of the kingdom or not the kingdom of god will still work its purposes out mm, um and right. I, nothing can stand in god's way it felt to me mm. um and that and that kind of some links links with what jesus says at the end of the passage about uh, he's um, um, him seeing Satan falling from the sky mm. like lightning. Yeah. But actually, the gates of hell are shaken by this mission. Mm. Um, if 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 the uh, disciples who want to walk the way of Jesus um, actually seize the moment and take the risk, mm. the gates of hell won't stand against it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that I did want to say about that is the fact that. When the disciples come back, they're filled with a bit of pride and a bit yes. of yes. aren't I great? Yeah. And and I wonder if if the reason why Jesus says those things is just to to remind them that this is not their mission, this is God's yes. mission. Absolutely. Um, and actually, they are to to celebrate what they've achieved through what God allows them to do, rather than what they've done in their own strength. Yeah, completely. It's, it's an, it, it, that's such a human thing, isn't it? That's what mm. we all do and feel like, and that's how it works. But you always have to remember it's God that's done it in you, rather than, and that's and that's where that one's going. It reminded uh, me of that bit in, in Paul's bit where 
who sows the seed, uh, but God waters and grows it? Uh, Apollos. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that's the same, isn't it? That um, They've had the message. They might take it up. They might not. We've done our job. We've, we've sowed the seed. We've said what we can. We'll see yes. what happens. Mm. And, and that, that and that kind of then links in with 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 with, with the free choice. Yeah, the seed being sown in the village or the town, irrespective mm. of whether you choose to accept it or not. Yeah, and we will never know the result of what of of what we do, mm. but if well, well, of what God does, because 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 yeah. of course it's it, it takes us back to that parable of this uh, the wheat being grown in secret. Mm. The farmer plants it, goes to sleep. Uh, wakes up comes to his field he never sees the seed growing but yeah. it grows anyway but it grows yeah yeah that's right um, yeah it reminds me of doing the seeds for life that i've just done at with holly mount and we had 30 29 children and we did trails and we did um, and we shared the lord's prayer with them we were talking about prayer but we sowed seeds and we don't know what will happen next mm. but those children will always remember that day. Helen, yeah, was there too, Helen, weren't you, if you're watching this? <laughs> and it was it was great. It was lovely to see and enjoy. And we went we went out in a sense, but we also invited them in because that was what the curriculum says. But very interesting. That's really interesting because I think um, one of the things that, that they do say is if you sow seeds at a young age, mm -hmm. even if those young people don't come to church, yeah. Um, later on, uh, they will remember yeah. what, what they've learned, and yeah, yeah. and it might spark something in them to come back in yeah, later exactly. in life. Then, um, interestingly, yeah. um, um, I've been to St Oswald's this morning, as you know, to oh, do uh, yeah. come to an assembly, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, obviously, um, I've not been, and none of us have been uh, for two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to the RE coordinator, and she said that uh, irrespective of the fact that two years have passed, the children who um, who were there two years ago wow. and have obviously got older, when they talk about assemblies, say, when is Open the Book coming back? Oh. And that's lovely, isn't it? Bless them, yeah, um, it is, yeah. Because it, it shows that actually we sowed seeds two years ago. Absolutely. Uh, and before yeah. that, and, and yeah, continue yeah. to do so. And they absolutely love, loved it. I mean, I mean, they were so excited to see me this morning. Oh, brilliant. Um, well done. So well done. It's really mm. good. Mm. Um, one other thing that I wanted to sort of reflect on um, regarding uh, going out and doing mission, because I think it's the thing that as a church we're really bad at, mm -hmm. is that we, we um, know the rules of engagement when people come into our space. Yeah. Um, we're good at sort of putting on events that we invite people to. So coffee mornings, strawberry teas, uh, I don't dram um, dramatic productions, all those things we're good at. And in those events and activities, there is space to talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. If people want to and want to engage with us. I mean, there are some people we know who, um, who are determined to, um, to ridicule and get a rise out of us to try and sort of upset but but in those spaces, generally, people who come are are wanting something from the activity and are open to the possibility of the spirit's prompting. But yeah. it's a very different rule of engagement when we have, when we have to leave the, uh, the 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 familiar surroundings of our church building or our church family and go and engage with people that we don't know. Um, yeah. One of the things that that came up in conversation for me after last week's service was people saying to me, how do you talk about Jesus in an unfamiliar context? Because because people have said to me, I, 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 I've, I've, I've talked to the postman um, about church. I've talked to the person on the, uh, the, the, um, on, on, on the till at say Sainsbury's um, about, about why I'm uh, doing what I'm doing, but it, it's very different, difficult to talk about, why Jesus matters mm. and the only example that I could think of that that I wanted to share really was was what happened when I first became a chaplain because mm. um, of course becoming a chaplain um, was was completely outside of the structures of the church you didn't have anyone to fall back on at all 
um, you just had to go. Um, and for the first first month or so, I found it really difficult to go into National Express bus mm-hmm. garages and talk to people because I'm quite a shy person normally. And if I don't, uh, and if I'm trying to engage with someone I don't know, I tend to keep keep conversations very minimal. Um, and one of the things that I found was that if you go and talk, well, if I, well, for me it was if you went and talked to someone on a one to one um over a cup of tea Mm. um it made it a lot easier so I mean I had conversations with people about forgiveness over a cup of tea um I mean I remember um, this one occasion I went into a bus garage um canteen and there was a guy sitting there on his own uh looking a bit a bit uncomfortable looking very worn out tired um he didn't clearly didn't want to engage with anyone but I took the opportunity because he was on his own to, to, to go and sit with him um and uh, he ignored me when I first sat down um and I eventually plucked up the courage and said oh mate I'm really sorry um you look like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders and he breathed a deep sigh and then said yeah I'm having trouble with my brother at the moment he seems to be uh driving me mad every time uh he does something um, he then follows that up with a silly mistake and 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 it really upsets me because it always falls to me to solve his problems. Mm-hmm. And he said, and how many times do you think I should forgive? Wow. And, and it was just just the perfect opportunity yeah. to talk about forgiveness. But but it out of what could have been quite a terrifying experience I was able to bring God into that conversation Mm. and I was able to sort of express something of the gospel and talk about what Jesus says about forgiveness um but I was then able to sort of move it on and ask him what he thought forgiveness Mm. meant Mm. um and we have to sometimes realize that that we don't have those 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 strong familiar structures to to work with we have to just use the stories that we have um to work mm, with mm, uh, mm. of course the interesting thing here is that they aren't ever on their own they've always no, got that's right else to work. Too. Mm, yeah yeah and they have obviously been with jesus for all that time they've got grounding they've got preparation um there's a lot that goes in before yeah. you go and in a sense like you they have a role they're going out to do that job you had a role there, didn't you? Yeah, and that's Sometimes true. it's easier to do it with, with a role, even if it's not the role you normally have, which gives you great sort of carte blanche to do that stuff. Um, it's really harder when you haven't got the role and when you're just a person that's there, perhaps, or perhaps it's not harder. Perhaps there's no yeah. expectations. It's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. I think having, I'm, I'm having a role does actually give you mm. permission to, yeah. to, to say things and to do things that you might not feel comfortable with doing when you're just a participant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Walking the Way has tried to suggest that we should look at places that we're already involved in, that, mm-hmm. th- that we are comfortable with um, talking to people um, in, a, in a sort of safe, safe way. I mean, I know that some people in our church have talked about the fact that they have been more confident about talking about their faith when they go walking um, yeah. as part of a walking group. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that um, a few people have said that that when they go to folk events, mm-hmm. um, people identify them as Christians because because they're quite happy to to say in that context where they feel comfortable um, that they are. I mean, interestingly, I never found uh, found it comfortable to talk about the fact that I was a Christian, let alone a minister um, at a folk club. Um, That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And I never sang um, mm-hmm. Christian uh, focused, messaged folk songs um, mm-hmm. until until I met someone, um, um, another URC minister, at, um, the, the ministers gathering, uh, the national ministers gathering back in 2018. And he said, oh, oh, I often um, sing um, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross as part of um, a folk sing-around. And, 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 and people actually requested that he did that. Um, so it is, it is uh, um, so I said, um, what, 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 and for me, since then, I've tried to at least mm. say with confidence that I'm a Christian. Um, and people have been much more accepting of it since. So, yeah. 
I think generally they are. It's just it's just the courage to say it, isn't it? Really, mm. sometimes. I, just, and hmm. I wonder if the reason why we are nervous about saying who we belong to and why we love Jesus is because in the society we live in, we we are aware that there's quite a lot of paranoia and mm -hmm. suspicion um, of people who aren't like us. Mm -hmm. And if like um, we and uh, we have the reaction that that we sometimes have from that particular guy who comes to mm -hmm. coffee, um, mm -hmm. then we're not going to be so confident about sharing our faith because we'll face rejection and ridicule. And it's a bit like I suppose. If someone slanders a friend or a, or a mm. family member that we love and care for, we're going to be mm. a bit more reluctant to say say anything, aren't we, about Jesus, yeah. who we yeah. um, 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 want to say that we love and want to follow. Mm. So We want to protect, but really that, that isn't what we've been asked to do, is it? Mm. Don't protect God. He doesn't need it. Yeah. <laughs> God. All. Yeah, I mean, God doesn't. Um, no, he doesn't need protection. God's got big enough shoulders. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We feel. Yeah. Um, but also, we're back to the lambs and wolves, aren't we? Yeah. There we're being lambs, and we're we're scared of the wolves. Um, and yeah, I think I think one of the one of the things that um, we need to remember, of course, is that that actually. We don't have to sort of uh, put Jesus in people's faces. Yeah, we can indeed. actually uh, share the good news, which is about love and about hope and about joy. Mm. Um, and, and and one of the things and about the world being turned on its head. Mm. I mean, I mean, one of the one of the observations that I sort of have made um, in this passage is that is that many people, including us sometimes, look at the world with despair and think that mm. there's nothing we can do about it. Mm. I, mean, I mean, we've got the climate emergency, we've got the cost of living crisis, we've got issues around race and sexuality and gender, we've got the war in Ukraine, and it might feel like God's given up on us. And if God has given up on us, which he hasn't, but it might yeah. feel like he has, um, we might think, well, do we, do, we, uh, um, do we need to even look to God? Does God care about us? And, and 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 actually, we have a message that says yes. God does mm. care about us. Mm. God is turning the world upside down. Um, mm. And and although it's difficult to bring that message of message of hope into that context, I think we should try. Yeah, it's a bit like uh, with all that we've been through with the pandemic and and things like that. Using lament. We need mm. to help people lament, don't we? Because people will be in a position which is bad mm. and unhappy and miserable. And it's no good to, in a sense, it's no good as saying, well, it's all going to be fine. Because for them at this minute, it isn't. No. And we've got to, sometimes we've got to get down there with them, haven't we? And, and, and be able to present something that's going to just keep them keeping on, really. And Absolutely. We're, we're into psalms and things then, aren't we? Um, so yeah, we've got hope. We've got lament when things are beyond endurance, in a sense. Yeah. And of course, lament actually brings us back to the fact that this this mission and ministry that we're about is not ours; it's God's. Mm. Um, mm. And lament is about actually saying, mm. "Look, God, I can't cope with this. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let go, and I'm just going to let you decide what's right." Um, and that's very diff difficult because we don't like to let go. Um, no. But we might be in that position where we can't hold on any longer. And therefore, there's got to be something to give and offer. And this is how you go to God in that position, isn't it? Yeah. For people who are really low down and really, this has got really depressing, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We've dragged it right down from being a joyful time of sharing God and uh, that the disciples were going out to do and talking about the kingdom coming close um but yeah but i mean the kingdom coming close in times of despair still leads can lead to yeah expression of joy god god Hopefully. is with us in the messiness as well as the good times and sometimes yeah. we sometimes we we forget that we and um, we tend mm. to only 
uh, look to God and to uh, to work with God in the moments of of joy. Mm, that's right. On the mountaintop, as it were, because of course this 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 passage comes, yeah, comes um, after. just after the transfiguration, where it does, where, God, it? Yeah. where Jesus is revealed who He is, and it starts off with those words. What is it what, that in, that make us look at what happened just before? I'm, I've shut my Bible. That's terrible. After this, yes. After this, yes. Yes. Mm. What yeah. was this? So yeah, that's that well, was one of this. We've had the um, and we've had the um, just before this, we've had the passage that we had in worship last mm. week, which last is, week, which is about Jesus fixing his eyes on Jerusalem and mm. then telling um, his disciples. Well, 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 having those conversations with people who make excuses about how they can't mm. be a part of the kingdom. Um, and, and Jesus talks about the idea at the very end of that passage before the after this moment. Um, anyone who starts to plough and keeps looking back is of mm. no use to the kingdom of God. But isn't that um, interesting positioning that there's that and then off the rest of them go? Yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like <laughs> the way that's worked out. Yeah. <laughs> very positive but there's because there's movement isn't there mm. you you you've got to stop making excuses yeah and now go now go yeah uh, this, is, this is what you've got to do yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um what was the other thing that i want oh oh i, oh, I know there was one other thing we've missed out a section of, mm. of, of 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 the reading um because it's it's got some pretty nasty comments in it so it's how terrible it will be for you Corazon how terrible oh, gosh, you, yes. Seder, etc um I don't really want to focus on that too much because I don't want to bring it down too much but the thing that I found interesting was I was reading in William Barclay um that Corazon was a town in in Israel in the first century um and um in this section Jesus mentions the fact that miracles have taken place there um, and William Barclay talks about the fact that Chorazin is never mentioned anywhere else in the Gospels. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not mentioned anywhere actually outside of the canonical Gospels either. And yet Jesus mentions the fact that miracles have taken place there in this passage. And, and one of the things that I found really interesting, I mean, what William Barclay says is that we need to treat the Gospels not as historical texts or biographies alone we also need to see them as as texts that are pointing us to something about Jesus' character and and, and where he's come from and where he's going to um and William Barclay talked about the fact you know at the end of John chapter 20 I think it is um he says um or is it 21 I can't remember which chapter it is but he says he says about the fact that um I suspect if if someone took all the activities and events that Jesus ever did and wrote them down, they would there would not be enough room in all the libraries that there are in the world. And, and I think it's yeah. it's important to realise that 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 uh, that God is at work in places that that are only named once, yeah, or yeah. not named at all. Named but God all. is present, and the kingdom of God has come close. Mm. Um, so so whether we're in Worcester or Kidderminster, or Billbrook, God is at work now in our lives. And I find that really quite a comfort. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yes, that's lovely. Mm. Well, uh, have we got anything else that we want to sort of pick up? Um, I'm just passage? having a look on mine, yes. I think I think that's probably all. I think I think we've um, and we've done a good job in, uh, in sort of uh, drawing out as much as we can from this passage. Mm, this yes, yeah. Um, and it's been good to have this conversation. Um, it's been interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, we'll see what happens the next time we, uh, we try and do this. <laughs> um, have another go. <laughs> hmm. But uh, thank you for uh, spending some time this afternoon with me. Um, talking Pleasure. About thank this you. Hmm. Um, I'm going to use a final prayer that is, is from the Roots Bible study. Yeah. Um, so let's pray. We bless you, holy God, that you journey with us, that you hold us by the hand and guide us, that you never force us or drag us, that you accompany us on every step of life's journey, that you are with us in stillness and our doing, that you are with us in our journeying and our arriving and our departing. 
that from the moment of our birth to the moment of our dying and beyond, you are our God. We bless you, holy God, that you journey with us. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. I found that prayer really beautiful, actually, because it, it kind of sums up what we've been talking about. That it God does, is yes. And bless or drag. Mm. Um, life's just, yeah, it is. It's really good. That's out of roots, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think I think I've included it actually um, for our blessing on Sunday. Thank you, everyone, for joining with both Sue and I in the Bible study this afternoon. We hope it's been a blessing to you, um, and we look forward to sharing with you in another one very soon. But uh, if you've uh, got any questions, uh, please do email me or um, speak to me in person on Sunday. OK, take care, everyone, and God bless, and I'll see you on Sunday.